Hey everybody, welcome to unit number four. We're gonna be looking at the next of the formal writing assignments this uh, week. And this one especially is going to play into your argument essay because you're going to be choosing your topic this week as well as finding a couple of uh, reference sources and you're going to be writing a couple of paragraphs that you can essentially use directly in the final version of the paper after making revisions, of course, based on the feedback that you get. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen and we're going to take a look at all of unit four. Um, while I'm on the homepage, just a reminder, if you did not already watch this video, I know it's a little long, but I promise you this video is going to help clarify a lot um, when it comes to documentation and to formatting your papers properly. Um, a lot of people get hung up on APA formatting. The real issue is not necessarily APA formatting as much as it is APA documentation. Um, citing the sources requires both internal citation or in-text citation and a references page. And anytime you have an assignment that involves research, you're going to have both of those things. If you do not have both of those things, then you are um, potentially committing plagiarism, which of course is a danger zone to not be in. Um, so, but it also is not easy. So that's why we're here. All right. So anyway, if you haven't already taken a look at it, please do. I also included my own MLA or MLA APA document here for you that is in Microsoft Word format. So you can use that as a template. Um, and it is set up the way that your unit four assignment will be um, for this week. So uh, that will kind of get you headed in the right direction there as well. All right, so let's go to unit four. We are focusing this week on evaluating and incorporating sources. Now you've already had a little practice incorporating sources. Um, in unit two, you had a source that was already evaluated and provided for you. And you included a direct quotation in a paragraph and practiced your citation. Now, some of you got a little further along in that practice than others. Um, but I promise you, you wanna keep working on those skills because that is the main thing that you're gonna need uh, for success in college writing. So this time out, you're gonna be finding your own sources using the post-university library system. So you're gonna be analyzing your sources for reliability. <clears throat> you're going to be incorporating evidence to support your main points. And of course, recognizing how that we evaluate sources. So what do we know? What do we need to know in order to understand whether or not a source is reliable? Um, in terms of activities, obviously there's gonna be readings and resources for you to view and read. There's going to be a unit discussion and of course the unit for assignment, which is the pro and con uh, paragraph assignment. So let's take a look first at the readings and resources. First, you're going to have some information about how to find evidence. Now, that video that I showed you that's in the announcements, um, I also use the post library to help you understand how to find sources. So um, again, if you haven't watched that one already, make sure that you do. It's going to help as well as the things that are here for you. You've got two reading assignments, both fairly short. And then the video, this one is a short, shortish video of under four minutes that will walk you through how to use a library database. Again, I also show you that in my own video. And then you're gonna learn a little bit about evaluating sources and creating your references pages. So one of the cool things about library sources, in addition to being kind of automatically reliable, is that the library will supply the APA citation. Now, sometimes you have to make a few changes. Sometimes they uh, maybe use a full first name where you only need an initial, or maybe they um, capitalize the title entirely, or it's in all caps and you need to undo that. But for the most part, when you find a library source, 
you can click on the cite button and it's going to give you an appropriate APA citation that you can copy and paste onto your references page. You also need to know how to do it yourself. Okay, so knowing what goes in those references is, is super important, but that's a nice thing about the library. Um, in terms of creating the references page, there is a, an activity here for you, as well as a couple of additional reading assignments. All right, so let me go back to unit four. Let's talk a little bit about the discussion board. Um, with the discussion board this week, oh, I didn't mean to do that, sorry, let me go back. With the discussion board this week, you're going to be looking at pros and cons of a product. So we're gonna be talking about pros and cons of an issue in the argument essay, um, but we're gonna start with something that you can write about from your own perspective. Select a product that is interesting to you, and you're going to write one paragraph about the pro of using that product and one paragraph about the con of the product. So there are some suggestions here. You can pick other products if you prefer, uh, but water bottles, um, like a reusable water bottle, self-driving cars, jelly beans, video games, eBooks. Um, a lot of people like to write about other kinds of cars other than self-driving, like all electric vehicles. You could talk about those. Um, SUVs, like whether or not to buy a larger vehicle. Um, so really the, the world is your oyster there. You can choose what you want to write about. And you're going to have two paragraphs, two fully developed paragraphs, one pro and one con. And then when you're responding to others, of course, in your responses, review your peers' product responses and or review your own product to determine if you would actually use it. Did any of the pros and cons highlighted persuade you to try the product or to use the product? Um, as usual, you should have your own post up by Wednesday night and then two follow-up replies by Sunday at the end of the unit. All right, so finally, and this one's a big one because it's going to be what you're gonna be working on for the next, the rest of the class essentially. You're going to be choosing an issue to write a pro and a con about. Um, these are argumentative topics and you are, uh, how we define pro and con is interesting because it's kind of depending on your own perspective. Um, but the three that you're going to choose from, and you only choose one, free speech regulated on social media. So if you, you ask that in a question form, it would be, should speech be regulated on social media? Um, mandatory American health insurance. And this is a little bit different from universal health care. Mandatory American health insurance is that mandate that was controversial a few years ago. Should Americans be required to have health insurance? That's what a mandatory health insurance is. Finally, we have the American National Service Requirement. Now, we do not have a current American National Service Requirement. Um, there are countries that require national service from all citizens. Israel is one of the most famous examples. Every person in, every citizen in Israel at 18 has to be in national service. And I don't, it's been a while since I researched it, but I know that there's a certain number of years um, and that sort of thing. If and when back in the olden days, the United States had a draft, that's a form of national service, forcing people into a form of national service. It does not though have to always be military. So as you're researching the pros and cons, think of it in terms of should America require national service? That's the, the way to ask that in a question. So for all those issues, any of one that you choose, you're going to have one paragraph that is pro and one paragraph that is con, but it's really your position versus the other position. So pro and con is, is, is an interesting way to put it, um, but let me give you an example. So if I believe that free speech doesn't apply to social media. In other words, my position is that social media companies should be allowed to kick people off for saying 
something that goes against their terms of service. Then my pro paragraph is really going to be a con because I'm going to argue that you shouldn't be allowed to say anything that you want to on social media. Um, and then my other paragraph is going to be the other side. So if it helps you to think of it that way, instead of pro and con, you may want to take that tack and think of the first paragraph is going to be what you believe. Remember, you do not have to say, I think, I feel, I see, I believe. You're just going to make the, the position clear. Um, and then the other paragraph, the second paragraph is going to be the other side. Um, another example of that is, uh, let's say I do not believe that Americans should be forced to have health insurance or have a mandatory health insurance requirement. So again, my pro is really kind of the opposite, which would say Americans should not have to have, uh, there should not be a mandatory uh, health insurance requirement for Americans. That would be my, that would be my topic sentence. And then the other paragraph would be the opposite side of that. So pro and con is a little bit tricky, but if you think about it as my side and the other side, that will help you to, to, to verify that. Now, I want to point out a very important document, this link right here. You should either print this out for yourself so you can review it as you're writing it and as you're completing it and as you're turning it in, or you should take careful notes in a notebook somewhere and make sure that you review these. Um, this goes through the entire process of writing this particular paper or this particular document. And then you're going to turn this into the, 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 the basis of your argument paper down the road. So you're going to use the library database to search for one article on each side of the issue. Um, and you should be using the library and not sources like Wikipedia or any website, really. Um, use the library databases to find those articles. It is not always super easy to find an article in the library databases. So make sure you, re you, you review how to use them. Make sure that you play around with the wording. Um, sometimes when we search for something in the article or something in the library and we don't find it right away, it's just because we're calling it something weird or we're putting too much information. So for example, if I put in free speech regulated on social media, I am probably not going to find a lot of things because that's a lot of words. So I'm going to simplify my search terms, free speech and social media, uh, speech and regulation, uh, social media and censorship. There's a lot of different terms that we can that we can throw in there. So be creative with how you adapt those phrases. Do not just put that phrase in. And when you don't find clear things that say this is a pro and this is a con, don't give up. OK, you also should be feeling free to reach out to the librarians for help. Um, librarians love helping students find information. That is really one of the main reasons why people um, major in library science. So there are help tools right on the library's page. Reach out if you are having trouble finding help. You can also, of course, reach out to me, but I promise you librarians are better at using library sources than I am. So in those paragraphs, you're going to have one on your side, one on the opposite side. In each paragraph, you need to have at least one thing cited. So in each paragraph, you're going to have at least one of the in-text citations, just like you were required to do in unit two. It will typically have the author's last name or author's last names, if there's multiple authors, and the year. Um, if for some reason there is no author, then it's whatever comes first in the reference list. So you want to do your references before you do anything else. Um, so you want to set that up before you actually cite the sources within the paragraphs themselves. So you should have two sources on your references page. You should have two paragraphs. There should be at least one in-text citation in each of those paragraphs from those two articles. And you should be paraphrasing them. So instead of using direct quotes in this case, like you did in unit two, 
we're asking you to paraphrase it or put it in your own words. It's still cited. You still share where you got the information from. This will be an APA document, so it should have the cover page like we've seen before, and the, the sample shows you exactly what that would look like. Um, the document itself is going to be double spaced. You're going to use Times New Roman 12 point. Um, you've got one inch margins all around, and then you're going to have the first blank page will be your references list. And again, it just needs two items on it. Each of your paragraphs should be seven to nine sentences. So these are well-developed paragraphs. These are not short paragraphs. You wanna use evidence that comes from a good academic reliable library source. Um, and it says paraphrased or summarized. Either way, you're putting it in your own words as opposed to using a direct quote. You can also include a quote if you want to, but make sure something is included that is paraphrased or summarized. As you're writing, I reminded you about this earlier, but this is a good reminder again, use objective third person language. We do not need to, for you to say, I think this or I think that. This is an academic paper. So you want to use regular third, pers third person objective language and avoid first person and even second person use and, and that sort of things. Um, the, Grades, of course, are based on the rubric, so make sure that you review the rubric carefully. And then once you get a grade back on it, you want to review not only the rubric, but my feedback. And I posted a video back a couple of weeks ago that shows you and walks you through how to find that feedback. Once you are ready to submit this, you will click on the link here and you will need to upload a document. Do not click on write submission. You need to create this paper in Word or another word processing program and save it as either a Word document or a um, PDF. Now there are other file formats that work, but if you get in the habit of using Word doc format or um, PDF format, your life will be so much easier, okay? So you'll click on browse local files, you'll choose it, you'll click open, you'll agree to submit your papers to the global reference database, and then you click submit. You do not need to put anything in the comment bar, and again, do not use write submission. You want to actually upload a document. If you need help with that, Back in unit one, there's some videos and some other things in the resources that talk about not only um, how, to, how to put things in, in Canvas or in Blackboard, sorry, but also that go through how to format your paper. Um, in terms of the, the citations at the end, they're going to be in alphabetical order and they're going to have the hanging indent, which means the second line and anything after that would be indented a half an inch. So it's kind of the opposite of a paragraph. But again, that, that document that I gave you has some on there. So you can actually use that as a, um, as a template. Um, it's a little bit simpler than the template that's in unit one. So you may want to use this one. You don't have to. You can use the one in unit one. It's absolutely fine. So this is a big week. Please take your time with it. Please reach out if you have questions. And uh, I am always happy to help. Um, so I will see you for sure next Monday with another weekly walkthrough. And in the meantime, happy writing. Have a good week. And uh, let me know if you need anything.